Today we're going to talk about Earth's layers as they relate to plate tectonics. We're going to work from the outside in. We'll start with the Earth's crust. That's the outermost layer. Um, it varies in depth from place to place. The continental crust tends to be thicker than what's called the oceanic crust, basically the rock and stuff that's underneath the oceans. Um, then we have the upper mantle. Um, the upper mantle plus the crust is what we call the lithosphere. And then below that, we have the lower mantle. The important thing to know about the lower mantle, um, actually two things. One, it also goes by another name called the asthenosphere. And the lower mantle is also the location where you find convection currents, the engine or the driver of plate tectonics. Going down further still, we have the outer core, the hot liquid layer deep uh, inside of Earth. And then finally we have the inner solid core, mostly iron and some nickel, very dense, very, very hot, but interestingly enough, solid because of all the pressure uh, from all the material above it pushing down. So just a quick review, we have the lithosphere, which is made up of the crust as well as the upper mantle. And then directly beneath that, we have the asthenosphere made up of the lower mantle. And this is the layer where convection occurs. So you might be asking yourself, how do scientists really know about these different layers? And really it comes down to earthquake waves, also known as seismic waves. There are two types of seismic waves. One is called the primary or P wave. And this type travels through solids, liquids, and gases. So basically all three states of matter. The secondary waves, or S waves, travel only through solids. And we know about these different waves because they happen every time an earthquake event occurs. Um, but what we can do is measure these different waves and figure out where on Earth they show up, where they start, and where they end, as well as how uh, quickly they travel through these different materials. And based on that, we can get pretty good picture of what the inside of the earth really looks like because certainly we can't send people down to go and investigate uh, earth's inner or outer core um, but what we can do is make observations about natural occurrences like these earthquake or seismic waves. So all of this information leads us to the theory of plate tectonics which is the idea that Earth's crust and upper mantle, remember that's called the lithosphere, is broken up into sections that we refer to as plates. And they move around on this lower mantle, remember that's called the asthenosphere, just like a raft might move on a river uh, due to the current of the stream. So what really moved our understanding of the plate tectonic theory forward was the discovery of convection currents in the lower mantle. If you're wondering what a convection current is, um, you've probably seen this in real life and maybe just not understood it, but boiling a pot of water is really creating a convection current. It's the hot water from the bottom of the pan near the burner rising and the cooler water near the top uh, sinking down and that causes a circulation. You also uh, if you've ever seen a lava lamp before, seen convection in action with that hot wax rising, kind of bubbling up to the top and then cooling off uh, at the top of that lava lamp and then sinking back down. So if we look at a cutaway of planet Earth and we're focusing in on the convection currents, if a convection cell is moving in a clockwise direction, it's going to move that plate to the right. And if it moves in a counterclockwise motion, it's going to move that plate to the left. So then we start to get into how plates interact with one another. They can move towards one another, they can move away from one another, they can also move by one another. And we'll get into more detail with that in the next unit. 